All right. So, uh, hi everybody. My name is Katie Stewart. I'm the Senior Manager of Product Management at Ovative Group. And in my original spiel for this next segment, I was going to tell you that I was so excited to welcome to the stage three of my favorite people from Ovative Group. But unfortunately, one of our speakers, Beth, is sick today, so I am no replacement for her, but I'm going to do my best and sub in for Beth today. So here's me introducing myself. But I'm going to need some backup today, so I'm really excited to welcome Edwin Reyes Herrera, who is a data scientist at our marketing analytics platform team. He's responsible for the research and development that leads to the next new features with our marketing analytics platform. I'll also be bringing to the stage Mia McMurray, who is a member of our client services team. She's a manager on that team, and really her role is to help harness the power of that marketing analytics platform and bring it to life for our clients every single day. So join me in welcoming Edwin and Mia. Hi, friends. Hello. All Yo. right. So as I said, I'm not Beth, but I'm going to do my best today to talk to you about enterprise marketing return, which is, as Dale mentioned earlier today, the metric that Ovative Group has created to truly measure um, the importance of marketing and marketing performance. Um, before we get into things, I want to start talking, I'll give you a little bit of context about who Ovative is. So if we roll forward a few slides. Maybe. Oh, I have it. Oh my god, you guys, I am so sorry. <laughs> I was like, somebody do this for me. OK, this is why you shouldn't mix your MC and your presenter, but here we are. OK, here's us rolling forward. OK, who is Ovative Group? We are a digital-first media and measurement firm. And really what that means is that we work every day to drive measurable performance for our clients. Our clients range from everywhere from retail clients to healthcare to financial services, and we have some social impact clients as well. Um, but no matter who we're serving, we really try to live out these core beliefs day in and day out. So first, every decision that you make for your business should be made with the customer in mind. And it sounds pretty straightforward, but we find that this can be a really unifying belief to for our clients. If you have all of your strategies with that customer in mind, you're going to be better off. Next, the customer's journey isn't siloed. It's in store, but it's also in line. It spans a variety of marketing channels. And so your marketing program needs to be managed with that holistic customer experience in mind. If you're going to be managing your marketing program holistically, you're going to need a North Star, which is where this third belief comes in. If you are managing your marketing program holistically, you need something to be able to say across all of these different channels, how are things performing? How can I make better data-driven decisions to help drive my business? And that's really why we created Enterprise Marketing Return and what we're going to be talking to you about today. Last, we believe that a partner should be more than just a vendor. So we try to show up in, in different ways for our clients every single day as thought leaders, as the best part of their day, um, and with uh, enterprise marketing return always at the forefront of what we're trying to do. So I am going to tell you a little bit about enterprise marketing return. We heard a little bit about this from Dale earlier today, but I'm going to tell you a little bit of a story here. Who's ready for a story? Yeah. Yes, yes, love it. Okay. So in 2009, Ovative was a founded. Um, and it was founded based on this belief that organizations had all of this great customer data at their fingertips. And it was really an undervalued asset of theirs. And if they could just figure out a way to harness that data, it would lead to sustainable, profitable business growth. At the same time, those executives who founded Ovative Group knew that the traditional metric of return on ad spend, which is usually what marketers are kind of obsessing over when it comes to measuring marketing performance, it really wasn't cutting it. It had a lot of challenges and a lot of pitfalls. And so they set out to really transform the measure of marketing success. And it wasn't easy. In fact, sometimes with all of the data that can be at the fingertips, as a, at your fingertips as a marketer, it can feel a little bit like you're untangling the tentacles of an octopus, which is why the octopus has become kind of an unofficial mascot for Ovative Group. 
But with all of this years of experience behind them and this compelling vision before them, the team set out to figure out what could that, that transformative measure of marketing success be. And through that work, Enterprise Marketing Return was born. So what is Enterprise Marketing Return? Really, in effect, it replaces that metric of ROAS that a lot of organizations use today to measure their, their marketing impact. And it does that in a way that helps address a lot of the pitfalls that we see with that traditional ROAS metric. So let's talk about how it does that. What are the pillars of EMR, and how does it come together in one metric? First, EMR is focused on enterprise revenue. Compared to your traditional ROAS, which is usually focused on e-commerce only performance, it's miss that means that you're missing out on how your marketing dollars are impacting your store, on your call center, on your wholesale business. So by taking the entire picture in, in, into account for our marketing metric, you're really getting that full enterprise view of impact. Next, inherently I think most of us know in this room that different customers have different value to your business. One customer that you acquire today is going to be much more profitable to you in the long run than maybe another client, another customer. ROAS doesn't take this into account. It treats everybody the same, takes credit the same, but with EMR, we incorporate this concept of future customer value, which is, what is the value to my brand of acquiring this customer today, and what are they going to bring me in the future? This next pillar is one of my favorites because I have to tell you all something really important. ROAS is a liar. It lies to you. It takes credit for sales that would have occurred without your marketing efforts. And so what we want to get at with EMR is what truly happened. What did my marketing dollars actually drive in customer behavior? So we incorporate the concept of incrementality to ensure that we're telling you the truth. Last but definitely not least, profitability. ROAS doesn't tell you if the sale that you just made was actually profitable to your business. So we incorporate margin into our EMR calculation to ensure that when you're looking at that final performance metric of how did this campaign perform, it's the true profitable bottom line impact to your business. So all of these things come together to make up enterprise marketing return. And really what I'm getting at here is that it's not just a metric, it's a mindset. It's a mindset for how you measure performance and it's a mindset for growth, which is why we're all here today. Um, so with these pillars in mind, I'm gonna hand things over to Edwin who's gonna talk about, okay, how do we do this? How do we bring EMR to life in our day-to-day -day work? So Edwin, take it away. Awesome, oh, yep, gonna need that. Switch hands. Yeah. Thank awesome. you. Thank you. Yeah. All right, cool. Well, I'll introduce myself again. My name is Edwin. I am a proud member of the data science team at Ovative. Um, I'm originally from Sonoma, California, have uh, called the Twin Cities my home for the past six years. Um, so for all of you out there, I hope that you consider making the Twin Cities your home if you're not from here. Um, and also give us a check us out at Ovative and you never know, eventually you'll come and join us and start drinking the juice with us. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I am super excited to be here today to provide you all with a deep dive into EMR. Um, and I just want to talk more in detail about how we go on this EMR journey with our clients, how we, like Katie said, take this mindset and this metric and really bring it to life for our clients and also use it to really be able to answer some of the toughest questions that are found in today's marketing landscape. There's an old saying that goes, I know that 50% of my marketing budget is going to waste, but the joke is I don't know which 50%. <laughs> so um, if you're able to resonate with some of the points that we have outlined for you uh, in the next couple of slides, then you can be 100% sure <laughs> that all of your marketing efforts and your marketing dollars are driving incremental profitable return for your organization. I mean, who's ready to deep dive into EMR with me? Yeah, Woo! yeah, all right, I love it. I love the energy. I promise buying into EMR, learning about EMR does not cause injuries. I'm just very <laughs> excited about it. So don't let the boot distract you from that. All right, sorry. Love, love sprinkling in some jokes there. All right, great. Um, so these are some of the questions that EMR helps answer for our marketers. 
So the first one is during this initial budgeting process. So finding the right mix across all your channels in your budget to really be able to maximize your EMR. Following that is channel optimizations. And this happens both within the actual media channel itself and also across multiple media channels where we're trying to find different levers to pull at different granular, granular levels to really be able to squeeze everything out of all your marketing efforts. Thirdly, going into the customer strategies, we know that if we are continuously trying to optimize to the short term, uh, we know that things are going to look really, really well for your business for the time being. But we know eventually the business will begin to suffer in the long term. So at this stage, we like to identify ways that we, we can be successful in the future with EMR. So the key point there is in the future. Finally, taking all these three things together, once we feel like we have the right mix of everything, once we feel like these three are working in tandem, the next question becomes then, well, how do I level up? What is the next step that I can take? How do I continue to invest in this amazing growth that I'm seeing for my organization and continue to just keep going, right, while also considering things like diminishing returns, for example? So now that you know what we're going to talk about, can I get a thumbs up? Hell, heck yeah. Heck for being yeah. really excited about diving into EMR. All right. Love it, love it, love it. Cool, cool. Thank you. So. One of the most powerful things that we do at Ovative is during this initial budget planning and forecasting phase. And the reason I say that is because this is where we notice a lot of the organizational transformations happen for our clients. A lot of the times when we begin working with our clients, uh, we notice that they're stuck in this before phase that we have outlined here for you. Now, what does that look like? So firstly, they're heavily invested in channels that are performing really well using a one-dimensional metric such as of the last click raws approach that we've talked about. But at the same time, within that same marketing team, within that same client, you have other team members that are using different KPIs to understand their performance. So what you end up having is a team that's struggling really hard to make an impact. There is no consensus about what needs to be used to be able to understand performance, to be able to drive their growth. Well, good news is that this is where EMR can swoop in and save the day. Uh, because with EMR, we've come to understand and see that when marketers are really understanding EMR and optimizing to it, it can be that missing link, that unifying force for everyone in the organization. So, for example, not only is your CMO talking about EMR and getting really excited about it, it also has someone like your CFO talking about it and understanding and optimizing to it. So that level of organizational restructure, restructuring, if you will, is what EMR can help unlock for your organization. Um, and really, is, EMR is, really sets the precedent for just making sure that your teams are aligned, because then it makes those budgeting processes and those forecasting conversations for the next quarter, heck, even for the next year, that much easier. And what we see is this is the really important point here. So if you haven't paid attention up until this point, this is the, this is the point to pay attention, is when, we start buying, when the clients start buying into EMR, we see on average a 25% increase in return on investment. I mean, who here, raise your hand, who doesn't want to have that type of increase, right? Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought, that's what I thought. Don't, <laughs> you don't want it, right? <laughs> um, but I just want to take a side step too, and. Uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, I'm a data scientist, so I, come, I, I bring a unique perspective as a developer. Um, the type of work that I do as a data scientist can be very ambiguous in nature, very exploratory. Um, sometimes we don't know what the solution is going to look like. Sometimes we don't even know what we're trying to work for, right? But with EMR, that's not the case. EMR is our holy grail. We know that whatever work that we end up doing as data scientists, it ultimately has to come back to maximizing the client's EMR. So with that, that's, that's pretty amazing to still be able to do that exploratory work that we like to do as data scientists, but always remember that the client is at the forefront. So it helps align our work with the client. So that's a win-win for all of us. So again, to recap, if you didn't pay attention to anything else, remember, 25% increase return on investment for you and your organization. Got it? Yeah. All right. Awesome. Cool. I can move on then. <laughs> So the next step is, once you feel like you have the right mix in your budget and you feel like you have a solid plan to really be able to capture all your goals, well, the fun only continues. And what I mean by that is we are continuously optimizing your budget on an ongoing basis. 
with EMR, it's really important to point out that you are focused on, you are focused on optimizing to the entirety of your business. So not only are you focused on analyzing how your online business is impacting your incremental revenue, it might be that it might be worth checking out how your offline business is impacting your incremental revenue because it might be driving a huge chunk of it. So with EMR, what I'm trying to say is we're really focused on understanding every piece of the puzzle and finding areas where we can invest in even more growth and unlock even more potential. In other words, we can use EMR at so many different levels that make sense for you and your organization. So the example that I brought for you today that I want to talk about is at the geographic level. So at Ovative with EMR, we have uh, analyzed EMR uh, based on your geographic location. And what we have realized with our clients is your EMR can be super different depending on your location, as I mentioned, the geographic location. So what this enables us to do is to be able to identify areas that have a higher store density and then through that, reallocate our spend to those areas to be able to drive even more incremental revenue. I mean, the best part of this is it costs you zero extra dollars out of pocket to be able to do. I mean, that's crazy, right? Being able to unlock even more without spending more, I mean, that concept is insane. <laughs> um, so again, just want to take another sidestep, want to bring in my data science perspective into this. EMR already kind of promotes the ability to always have granular data on hand. So as a data scientist, I mean, that's a dream come true. We're constantly asking for data to be super specific, new data. We, we're constantly trying to validate against it, experiment it. So the fact that we work with EMR that already promotes having so much data at hand to find the areas where we can continuously improve for you, I mean, that's just another win-win for everyone. Um, so again, to recap, in case you haven't been paying attention, but I'm assuming you are now. Um, to recap, EMR is super high dimensional. We can use it at different granular levels, depending on what makes sense for your, uh, for your client, or as our client, um, to drive even more incremental revenue. And it costs you zero extra dollars. Remember, zero extra dollars. Awesome. <laughs> All right. Um, now I'll go to the uh, last portion of my piece of the presentation. Um, so as we all know, probably here and at home, wherever you're watching, is a really essential part of any marketing program is acquiring new customers. But unfortunately, the reality is this can be one of the hardest components and also one of the most expensive. Um, so with EMR and Adovative, this is what we like to think. We like to work smarter and not harder and not just go about trying to acquire any regular old customer. Well, Edwin, which customers do I want to acquire? <laughs> well, thanks for asking, imaginary person that's definitely not in the crowd. Um, I will answer that. So the type of customers that we want to attract using EMR are those customers that will come back for a second purchase, a third purchase, a fourth purchase, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. In addition to this, we're also trying to attract customers that are going to come with a huge basket size whenever they're trying to do purchases. And how we do that is, as Katie mentioned, future customer value. Future customer value is another really important component to EMR. So we are able to understand this future customer value at different customer segments to be able to shift our marketing strategies and really be able to go after those uh, specific customers across different media channels. So how do we do this? How have we done this? <laughs> well, in fact, for a major fashion retailer, we were able to identify that one specific media channel was particularly really good at driving second purchase rates among new customers. And what that resulted in is us being able to reallocate and shift the budget to that better performing channel um, and be able to drive even more new customer incremental counts year over year. Um, so that's just a really powerful way to kind of get new customers into our pipeline. Um, I don't have a really cool data science perspective on this one. I'm sorry to disappoint. But it is really, really cool to be able to understand our customers at such a granular level to really be able to drive growth um, for your client, for our clients, for your organization eventually, right? Um, so I just gave a quick deep dive on these three components uh, that make up EMR. But the beautiful thing is once these three come together and they're working super, super well, you, you might say, well, hey, these are really cool. I love having these by themselves. Like, man, I can just keep optimizing, right? 
Well, the good news is we can bring them all together, like I said at the beginning, and say, okay, how do we continue to scale this and drive even more growth? So I am super, super pumped to pass it over to Mia to go over a case study where we did exactly just that. So she will be talking about profitable scaling. So take it away, Mia. Thank you. Wow, that was electric. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to top that energy. Thank you. Um, yes, hello everybody in person and also virtually. My name is Mia McMurray. And as Katie mentioned, I'm a manager on our client services team. So I've been at Ovative for over four years now, which is crazy, but I've spent time both on the measurement and analytics side, and now I've gone over to the dark side and I'm, I'm client services. So super excited to be walking through a case study of how we actually brought this to life for one of our major retail clients, Kate Spade, New York. Um, just to give a little bit of an overview before I dive in, we began our partnership with Kate Spade early in 2020 amidst world craziness. Uh, and as we established that partnership, we across teams at Ovative, but also with Kate Spade, knew that one of our primary goals that we wanted to accomplish was unlocking profitable enterprise growth for their organization. And so as Katie and Edwin have been talking about, EMR was the solve. We knew that we needed to partner with the Kate Spade team to transform their measure of marketing success, which was previously ROAS, return on ad spend, um, which has its known downfalls and limitations, and move towards an EMR-centric world that we can leverage to make smarter decisions. So again, data, insights, analytics, all super exciting, but unless we're actioning on it, unless we're making different decisions, not super impactful or valuable. So with that example in mind for Kate Spade, we did integrate EMR as their updated source of truth, single KPI. Again, enterprise marketing return is both the mindset and the single metric. Um, but we did integrate it as our source of truth for Kate Spade. We started making different decisions and we were able to unlock some really awesome scale for their business. So I'll walk through that on the next slide. But one last call out I wanna make is that cross team and cross functional collaboration was so pivotal to this uh, partnership and the success that we saw with Kate Spade. In addition to partnering as an Ovative team with their marketing teams, we had really close connection with their finance leaders. Um, and also leadership all the way up through C-suite to drive buy-in and adoption and drive those smarter decisions. So that's just a key enabler of some of the success that we saw with Kate Spade. But I will jump into this next view where we overview three high-level phases of how we actually brought this to life with the brand. So the three phases were establishing EMR hurdle rates, then shifting into implementing a variable budget approach, and then finally taking an iterative, uh, you know, iterative process of making sure that we're validating performance, we're ensuring accuracy, and then evolving over time. So jumping a little bit into each one of these, establishing EMR hurdle rates, I would say overall the objective of this phase was to understand what the Kate Spade side finance goals were, and then make sure that as a marketing team and as an extension of the Kate Spade team, our Ovative crew is making decisions that will optimize performance to those profitability thresholds. So making sure that we're avoiding siloed decisions um, and siloed functional performance metrics of success. An example of you know, establishing EMR hurdle rates, I know that's super high level. I'd say an example of um, an EMR of $1.50, you can interpret that as I invest a dollar in my paid media and I get $1.50 back in incremental profitable enterprise value. So in that high level scenario, if the client has 50% margin goals um, and we were achieving a dollar and 50 cent EMR that would loosely connect to their profitability targets. So just to bring it to life a little bit more tangibly, that's how we high level are thinking about it. Um, and to power those profitability targets, we're analyzing our historical data, we're partnering with the client on their current financial state, their financial goals, long-term planning, and then kind of marrying between the two to understand, hey, what is a starting point hurdle rate that we can use to inform our investment. The second phase is implementing that flexible budget approach. 
So the goal ultimately of this phase is to move beyond a world where marketing budgets are stagnant and set at a monthly or quarterly channel tactic, et cetera, level of detail and evolve into a world where we are making decisions in an agile way to maximize the impact of marketing because that's what we're all trying to accomplish. Um, and so what this flexible budget unlocked once we drove EMR trust once we drove buy-in across different levels of leadership, across finance teams, across marketing teams, was allowed us to say, hey, in that previous example I walked through of $1.50 being our target hurdle rate, let's pilot implementation of that $1.50 return as our goal and our North Star on a weekly and monthly basis and revisit our budgets uh, week in and week out to make sure that we are fully optimizing to that target that we want to hit. So if our EMR performance for the last month was $2.35, that is much higher than our $1.50 EMR hurdle rate. And honestly, you know, high efficiency, high profitability can be viewed as positive, but at that point, we would probably recommend scaling more aggressively into media spend so that you're not leaving dollars on the table knowing that we have aligned upon profitability goals across different teams. So depending on how performance is week in and week out, we were establishing hurdle rates, we were evolving, we were iterating, and we were making sure that we had constant communication with our clients to make sure all parties felt really good and confident about the decisions we were making. Um, but I'd say that was definitely phase two is let's just try this out and we're gonna have learnings along the way. It'll take a few months to build reps uh, and really get in a groove. Um, but let's start here and let's just build momentum. And then finally, just the iterative approach, it kind of dovetails into what I was just saying, but we aren't having like a set it and forget it approach to hurdle rates. It's all about leveraging our technology products to reconcile actual performance to planned performance and then tying back to client side actualized financials and just revisiting, hey, how are we doing against the targets that we set? What adjustments do we need to make? And then as the client's financial goals change throughout different phases of the year, depending on their business strategy, how do we evolve as an innovative team to help support them in those goals shifting over time? Sweet. So ultimately, we did establish EMR as the source of truth for Kate Spade. A super fun challenge, and there were a lot of learnings on the way, but ultimately, this unlocked over $18 million in incremental enterprise value for the client and enabled them to scale their budgets in the first year over $11 million higher than they had originally planned to support their aggressive sales goals at the top line and bottom line. Um, it was super fun to be a part of, great crew, but again, it's all about rethinking about what your overall enterprise strategy and goals are, and then leveraging media as a growth driver for that, as opposed to viewing your paid media as, hey, how are we comping to last year? What have we done in the past? How, how do we rethink that and flip it on its head um, and make smarter, faster decisions? So. That is my portion of the presentation. Uh, thank you all virtually and in person for joining us. We will be around to chit chat and answer any questions also on stage. Uh, but there are a few call to actions up on the slides here on each side if you wanna get connected with Ovative and come help us transform the measure of marketing success. Thank you. Any questions? Yes. Can you hear me? There. Yes. Thanks. Great presentation. I have two questions. Um, they're not related. One is, how does this apply to a startup who's bootstrapping? Okay. Because there's a lot of people here in that boat. Okay. And secondly, um, I'm curious if you also offer 360 degree support for, cus for your clients in other, that provides them with feedback about their products and transforming their products in an agile way too, which I think could be even, you know what I mean, like this is selling not just to this group, but 
you know, do you give them that product feedback so they can make immediate adjustments on their inventories, et cetera? Yeah, I think maybe to take that first one to start. So how does this translate to the startup world? Like I think we all mentioned at some point, uh, EMR is more than just a metric that you can apply to a large organization. It's really a mindset that you can apply when you're just starting up. So as you're thinking about you know, starting a business and, and how you want to measure the impact of the marketing that you may be doing um, you know, from the very beginning, think about am I measuring to my full enterprise revenue? Am I measuring to that or am I just measuring one piece of the puzzle? Am I considering the value that different customer segments may drive for my business? And it doesn't have to be, um, you know, no, no offense, Edwin, but it doesn't have to be a data science approach to future customer value. It can be, you know, just trying to better understand what your customer segments are to begin with. Um, and then, you know, of course, applying incrementality and margin, those are different concepts that you can you know, start with and grow your way into maturity with EMR to maybe that more future ideal state. Um, but I think by applying the concepts from, you know, from the very beginning, you'll still see a lot of benefit to your organization. And now I'm forgetting your second question. 360 feedback on your products. Yeah, great question. So Ovative um, has, a, has an interesting approach for our clients. So we offer three main categories of services. So one is our media business, where we're buying and optimizing media on behalf of our clients. We offer measurement services. So um, everything that we do is focused on EMR, but we do have a very specific like measurement team that helps bring measurement to life for our clients. And third is consulting. And I think this is where I would get at what you're talking about, where we have clients that don't quite fit the mold for our other offerings. And really what our consulting business is there to do is to help solve whatever problems that our clients may have related to their marketing, their organizations. And I think, um, you know, related to that consulting, what we do is we kind of take whatever problem you're facing and help you break it down into smaller pieces and solve it. So I think that's where you know a great opportunity to provide feedback on the products themselves could come in. Because like, I, I'm guessing what you're thinking is like, this is all needs to be a holistic approach, right? Like marketing dollars, but also like, what is my my product doing? Like that's part of it too. Um, so I definitely think that like our consulting team would be, able to, would be able to help in that realm. Does that help answer your question? Great. Other questions? Sorry, were you gonna say something? No. Oh, okay. Questions? So we answered all questions perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> we read your minds. <laughs> All right, all right. Um, so I will be back with my MC hat on again to introduce the next speaker. Um, but thank you all so much. We'll take a break for a few minutes and we'll be back shortly. Thanks everyone. Yeah.